Join former Miss World Dr. Raleen Strauss and the ever so suave Nico Panaggio as they host this year's Pink Polo presented by Biomedical Emporium on the 9th of November at Valdivia Estate. With proceeds going to breast cancer awareness, be part of SA's Who's Who saying hello to summer with a day of polo, fashion, sunshine and celebrity in the Wineland at the Pink Polo presented by Biomedical Emporium. In 2015, Anna-Marie van Veek was diagnosed with breast cancer. After a mastectomy and ongoing treatment, she can proudly say that she is cancer-free. She joins us to discuss the amazing work that the Valdivia State is doing alongside Biomedical Emporium to help those suffering from breast cancer. It is truly polo with a purpose. Anna-Marie, welcome to The Laugh. Hi, thanks for having me. You have such a phenomenal story that I'm sure so many South Africans can identify with. How did you find out? that you had breast cancer? Oh, um, I had felt a lump in my left breast. Mm. I was 27 at the time. Um, I had no history of breast cancer or cancer in my family. I still have all four of my grandparents. My mother has never been for a mammogram. My grandmother's no one. Yeah. And um, I felt this lump and I left it. I thought it was a swollen gland and um, my husband eventually, after about a month and a half, nagged me to go see the doctor, mm. which I eventually did. And then everything just was so rushed. It was doctor, sonar, mammogram, biopsy, just so quickly. Wow. And then about a week later, I was having a manicure. <laughs> a week later, a week living later, your life I was as having normal. a manicure. And um, I got this phone call from, from my doctor. Mm. And he said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's, it's cancer. And I didn't want to make this poor girl feel uncomfortable. So I said, really? Oh, no. <laughs> so within that moment where I'm sure fear yeah, like... is, 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 is just immediately into you, uh, doubt, concern, questioning, yeah. you still had the presence of mind to yeah. consider your <laughs> misuse's feelings. Yes. Shame, and then she finished and... Um, I said to her, wow. I think I've just been diagnosed with cancer. Um, I, need, I need to go, I'm sorry. And uh, she kind of like, okay, bye. Wow. <laughs> so, and just like that, your world was changed? Just like that, my world was changed. My husband was playing golf at the time. Wow. Um, so I was sort of like, do I... Do I call him? Do, do I, I call tell him? him? Do I wait until do he gets home? Do I wait home? until he's finished? Uh, you know, what do I do? My mom was, was at home, luckily. Mm. And um, so I went over and I, I told her. She was the first, the second person I told. Heartbreaking. And um, when she started crying, I started crying. Mm. And, and the journey from, of course, that moment finding out to where you are today, proudly standing <laughs> firm and saying that you're cancer free. How did yeah. that journey look like? It was hard. It was it was very tough. Um, I was young. I was 27. You were so young. Uh, I'd been married for three years and would have wanted to start trying for children. Mm. And um, all of that just kind of came to a, a standstill, a halt. Mm. When they said to me I had to have a mastectomy, mm. that was the hardest. But I... I loved my breasts. I yes. think every woman should love their breasts. It's what makes us feminine. It's, yes. It, they're beautiful. Um, and, you know, that, that someone just said they had to go. I think that it's also so important hearing stories like this, like your own, and thank you so much for your bravery in sharing it. But it just instills a kind of feeling that we should not rely on what happens externally. We should not uh, rely on our looks to kind of cement who we are on the inside. That is such a gorgeous picture yeah, of you, and I'm uh, sure that you weren't feeling so gorgeous in that moment. That was the morning after my mastectomy. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and okay, so after mastectomy, how does it look like, how does it feel like having your chest feeling that it's been stripped of all things feminine and and then how did you heal from that and that was difficult that was very hard um you don't feel like much of a woman okay. i had I, I scar naturally terribly yes so i literally felt like i'd been sliced open and just mm. removed and it was it was a horrible feeling i didn't feel feminine um i sort of also focused on what I thought was wrong with my body. Mm. Um, I'm short, I'm not 
Oh wow! So it, it, it raised up other exactly, insecurities within exactly, you. Exactly, exactly. And then, um, how did Bio uh, Biomedical Emporium and, of course, the Pink Polo as an <laughs> initiative come through? To I mean, you saved yourself, and with the yeah. help of your family and and everyone around you, having that strong support system. But how did they? add to that support and how did they add to that love? I met uh, Dr. Judy from Bio Biomedical in 2016, mm. straight after my second reconstructive surgery and um, through a mutual friend. And he told me this amazing product was on the market and mm. she just wants to meet you. So I met with her and, you know, I was skeptical at first. Of course. You know, the product, I, I didn't know it. And I had at that moment already been going through um, scar, mm. scar treatments yes. and it wasn't working. And, um, and she told me a bit about it and I literally, I was so frustrated and so over everything that I sort of lifted up my top. <laughs> and you were like, can you fix this? Literally, literally, I was like, can you fix oh this? Gosh. And she kind of looked at me and she was like, yes, I can. It's gonna take time. But we can be here for but, you. But we can. And and as in, in general, as of course this being a legacy member and and standing arm by arm with other cancer survivors and incredible personalities around the cause, what are you most looking forward to leading into this pink polo? And of course, continuing to spread spread and share your story. I think, for me personally, breast cancer in general has got a lot of stigma to it. Mm. Uh, a lot of you. <laughs> It's only people who lead a certain lifestyle who get it. It's only uh, women over the age of 50 mm. who are most likely. Um, and then when it happened to me, I mean, I was healthy, I was young. Um, no, no family, family history. history. Yeah. It just came as a complete shock. That to me is what I want to focus on, mm. on raising awareness, that it can happen to you n no matter what and to not ignore choices. it, ignore, ex not ignore the signs, it. act immediately. Yes. While Absolutely. we're not only thankful to all the doctors and the Pink Polo in general who supported you, but to your husband, to your family oh, who were sure. there and encouraging you to go get it checked up at oh, the doctor. Yeah. Because of course, the sooner you act, the better. But And we, we celebrate the fact that you're standing so tall right now today, <laughs> arm in arm with the Pink Polo, saying that this is Polo with a purpose and you are about to be the change that we want to see. Thank you so Thanks much. So. Thank you. We appreciate it. Now look, we continue this incredible conversation but we're joined by a true force in the form of Lauren Dallas after the break.